Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DCL Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Erica Resnick. Hi, everyone. Our producer, Craig Williams. Ahoy, hoy. And via Skype, Dreams Unlimited travel agent, Elaine Edwards. Hi, friends. And just a reminder, this show, along with all the shows we produce, brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. Experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. And if you book your DCL vacation with Dreams, you're going to get the services of a phenomenal agent who's going to help you every step of the way. And you'll also get up to $1,000 shipboard credit added to your account when you get on board. And this is all for the same price you're going to pay Disney, and Disney's not going to give you a shipboard credit. So please, or give you a great agent who's going to help you. They're not going to give you anything. So it's the same price as going through Disney Direct. Just you get all this extra stuff, all this great extra stuff in addition. So please, show your support for us if you like our content. DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com All right, so this week, we are going to talk to Erica about her first time experience on a Disney cruise ship. She was on the Disney Dream yeah, it was it was amazing. I was there for Memorial Day weekend, um, and it it was life changing. Honestly, it it felt short, but it was perfect because we had oh, to was experience. It a three night or a four night? Uh, three night. Yeah. So we Friday morning, you know, got to the port. I think our time to check in for all of that was twelve, and we did our COVID test and everything. Waited twenty minutes, and. They let us on in and walking through that little Mickey shaped tunnel to get onto the ship was very magical. We recorded that because I was like, I need to remember this forever. Um, but it was perfect. It was, I, we both had a lot of fun. It was the best thing that we've ever done vacation wise. You know, we always do like staycations in Orlando, my wife and I for any kind of anniversary. And this time we were like, well, this is five years together. We can't just do a staycation and after you know hearing you talk about all the disney cruises we were like you know what we're gonna do that and one day i just woke up and i said i'm going to go to dreams unlimited and i'm just gonna put in a little quote and see what it is for our anniversary weekend and people should know this is before you just recently came came on board to work with us yes so this was before you were an employee yeah this was it was last year so way before that and um you know, Joy got back to us and gave us a beautiful quote. And we said, you know what, Joy, let's do this. And Joy was amazing the entire time. Any questions we had, I got a quick response. I got all the answers I needed. And it made the process feel seamless. You know, because I, I had like a million questions. I haven't cruised since I was like 16 with my mom and our family. We went on a Norwegian cruise to the Mediterranean. And... I didn't have a great time, so I was worried to go on a cruise again. So I had What was a it million. about that experience that you didn't have a great time? Um, I was sick most of the time, and I just felt like I didn't get what I wanted out of the experience. I didn't like the shows. I don't remember the food at all, and I'm a big food person. If I can't remember the food, that means I didn't have a good time. Okay. So... I remember my excursions, like Pompeii, amazing. I had a blast, right? I remember that. I remember going to Rome. I remember going to the Vatican because we got kicked out of the Vatican. Like, I remember oh. those things. And, but I don't remember. There's a story remember. there. Yes, there is. Um, but I don't remember the ship. I don't remember the service. Like, it just, it didn't stay with me. So, for I was so worried. So, I gathered all the questions I could possibly have, emailed Joy. And then Denny eventually became my day of person of being like, hey, you, you just did this like a few months ago. Can you give me like 10 pointers I need to know before I get on? Because I get, get a lot of travel anxiety when I do something I've never done before mm -hmm. on my own. And I have my mom being like, this is your first time leaving the country without me. I'm like, I'm going to be like 50 miles away. Like, it's fine. Yeah. So I was just trying to make sure that I knew everything. And Joy was very, very helpful in that. And the shipboard credit helped a lot. Okay. That was very helpful because I had Disney gift cards, but then having that on top just made things easier because we like to shop. I bought this sweater, I bought a shirt, bought a tumbler, bought a lot of things. Oh, yeah. I, 
I'm notorious for my shopping on the ships. Yeah, I, I got lost. I was in the stores, and I was like, wow, I need this. The house needs this. I need I need all of it, everything about it. Um, but the I want to start from the beginning. Like, getting onto the ship was very easy. I, I didn't feel scared. I saw the beautiful dream, and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. It's beautiful. Um, and we got a veranda because I can't... I can't feel like I'm in a box. I get claustrophobic, so I need to be able to be able to step out and breathe air. And that veranda was beautiful. I love being able to go out there in the morning. Um, even like in the afternoon, we just stand out there before dinner. We'd stand out there, take pictures. Completely worth it. Um, sail away. I want to talk about that show. Okay. I love it. It was so much fun. We waited in the adult pool area for a while until the show was getting ready to start we ran over there got a front row seat and i was just so happy the minute the show started i got i got emotional as a whole thing got like all of the chills it was beautiful and that's the way our vacation started and i was like this is perfect like that just means everything can get better from here right and it did do you like Sail Away? Do you watch it? I, you know, again, I've done, I've done so many Disney cruises that, like, a lot of the shows and stuff I don't do anymore because I've done them. I've done them so many times. And for me, I just, I just want to be on the ship. I just want to, like, experience being on the ship. And I don't care where I am. You know, because I love, love cruising. I love Disney cruises. I love just the experience of being there. So I'm not your guide for, I'm not your guide for shows and things like that. <laughs> but I would say for Sail Away, though, I, I think even, even though I'm kind of with you that I've seen Sail Away so many times, unless, you know, like it's inside because weather makes it impossible to do it outside you know then it changes it up a little bit but it, it is the same thing every time just different people getting excited but i always want to be in the general area because as soon as they start the countdown and they we get ready to go and you hear the horn go off for the first time like that is that is something that sets disney cruise line apart from See, any other one i'm usually in the spa for sail away i'm usually in the spa i always, i like booking a spa treatment like on on embarkation day and it, it, the, this last one i was getting my nails done i was getting my a manicure I mean, um you can still kind of hear it though but that's that's yeah. when i know the vacation starts when you hear when you wish upon a star through that loud horn like it's just like okay it is it is a disney cruise now Oh, yeah, we like see, that, that was another unpopular opinion I had that I, I didn't share. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How annoying the horn gets. Um, when they're going through, when they go through like all 18 songs, it's like, all right, we get the point. You can play songs on your. <laughs> no, but Sorry. I agree with that. I liked, I liked that part too, because it was really like, okay, like, here we go. We're on vacation officially. Um, night one, we had dinner at Animator's. I didn't like the food that much, but I also was getting seasick. Um, but I just threw on my sea bands. They brought me ginger ale, and I was fine. Um, I did like the screens. I thought that was fun with Crush and everything. Really cute. But after that, we went to Evolution and the adult-only area, and I became, like, best friends with a cast member there. His name's Boston from the U.K., and he was just amazing. He's part of the entertainment team. So, like, the trivia, all the events you see happening around the ship. And it was just really nice to talk to him. He took a bunch of pictures for us. And that was the moment we were like, wow, the service here is really different really than what we're used to. Um, it felt like everyone took the time to, to talk to us, to get to know us. Um, especially at Cabana's that day. When we got on, I had to be, you know, the annoying person being like, hi. Um I have allergies. I can't have any dairy. And they called someone over. They brought this pink slip. They filled it out with what I wanted to eat, what my allergy was, wrote down where I was sitting, went to the kitchen, and then brought it to me once it was done. Wow. And they did the same thing every morning for my breakfast. 
So they went and got my dairy-free Mickey waffles. Um, they made my eggs separately, my hash browns separately, everything, and then brought it to my table. They always made sure I had somewhere to sit so that someone could bring it to me. And they said it's because they can't let that food get lost. They have to make sure it goes to the person that has said allergy. So I loved that. Because I've never had that anywhere else. Disney's so good with stuff like that. Cruise Line's phenomenal with any kind of food allergy or medical issue, things like that. They are phenomenal. Yeah, they really are. Even our, our dinner team was really great about it. The first night, they knew immediately. They're like, you're Erica? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, you're the one who can't eat dairy. I said, yes. Okay, this is what we can have for you. We'll make it for you. Every night, you're going to get a different dessert that is free of dairy so that you can enjoy dessert as well. So every night they took it so seriously. It made me happy because I had to feel like, oh, well, if I eat this, am I going to get sick? Am I not going to feel good? Because I want to enjoy my time. I don't want to feel bad. And to know they took care of everything just made me really happy. Mm-hmm. And that that was another thing that I was like, wow, I don't know if I would get this anywhere else. Like this much attention to it where they really cared. So that meant a lot to me. Um, And that was one of the reasons I said, I need to go back. Was there anywhere in the experience where they didn't meet your expectations? I feel like I had really high expectations going into it because I've only ever heard good things. You've only ever heard me gush about it. Yeah. And so I wouldn't say there was anything bad. You know, as I mentioned in a different time, I didn't think that the aqueduct had all the hype that people were giving it but i wasn't giving it the high expectations either before going because i do the water parks here um so i was kind of okay we'll see how that goes but i think everything everything met everything that i created in my brain right there wasn't a moment where i was disappointed in something ever The only thing I found annoying was the little drink guys every five seconds coming to me at the adult pool. Hey, hey, you want a drink? And I I just told you two seconds ago that I'm good. I'm fine. It was aggressively bad on the last cruise. Like, I know it's always different ones. So, yet they don't know who's covering what area. Sometimes they're trying. But it got to the point where I'm like... do I have to completely cover myself up, have headphones on, do something to get some peace and quiet without being asked nonstop if I want a drink? They and are I love a drink. very, very aggressive with the drinks. They, yeah. they are. I was like, should I make a sign? Like, should I write something? <laughs> like, like, I'm good. The one time I did get a drink was because they were like, hey, it's $5 mimosas till noon. And I was like, all right, bring me a mimosa. After I finished my mimosa, you want this other drink? No, I'm good. Thank you. It's fine. And the same thing happened on the island as well. We we saw that happen a lot, cast away. And that's the only thing that brought me any type of annoyance or a feeling of, oh, I didn't think this would happen on on a Disney ship. Well, I think they're also under a lot of pressure to make their numbers. Margins on alcohol are really high. Um, profit margins on alcohol are really That's what we were thinking. And so the more of it they sell, the more money the cruise line makes. And Disney, I think this is true of the cruise industry in general, but I know it's true of Disney. They're not shy about putting pressure on their cast members uh, to produce. They're not shy about that at all. Um, I'm sure you got the speech the last night of your cruise from your, um, uh, your, your, your servers Yes. About how important it mm-hmm. was that you give everything, you know, a, a five rating on the... Yeah. That's because they... Uh, if you say, you know, our service was great, but the food was only a three, that reflects back on the servers. Yeah. They, they hold them that. accountable for that, which is horrible. It's blackmail. It's basically emotional blackmail. Mm-hmm. So that Disney doesn't have to deal with bad ratings on their on their food. Because you you know, they figure if people know that it's gonna reflect badly on the servers and you develop a relationship with these servers, 
even on a three night cruise, you get to know them, you get to like them. Um, and you don't want to do anything that would reflect badly on them. So they literally, Disney literally emotionally blackmails you into giving the food a better rating than a lot of cases it deserves. Now, if you actually thought the food was great, fine. But if you didn't, if you didn't, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Yeah, they, it was like a, like a three-minute speech that he gave us about, like, please, like, this reflects on me. And we we're just kind of like, wow, like, I can't Even though they're not the, the food, ones cooking yeah, the food. Yeah, they're not the ones making the food. Um, but we made sure to fill that out. And um, we even added, like, extra gratuity for our dinner team because they did everything like really well and they remembered it was our anniversary so on the second night um they did a whole thing for us in the in the restaurant they brought us a little cake and they sang an anniversary song it was really cute so i loved the team i just felt bad that on the last night he had to give us like this three minute speech basically begging us to make sure we gave good ratings so that it wouldn't reflect badly on on him yeah elaine you want to jump in here um, I was going to ask, let's see, I was going to ask you about the travel agent. We already discussed that. Um, you had a veranda. Well, that's one of the really important things that I always recommend to first time cruisers and that we want them to understand is understand what stateroom you are getting, um, and what it is and where it's located. Where was your stateroom located? Did you like where it was located? Well, I made sure to um, ask Joy's opinion because I said, listen, both of us are worried about getting seasick, you know, um, but I need to have a veranda and I just I really don't want to get sick. So we were put midship on deck six and it was perfect. That room was was perfect. I, I wish I could get that room every time. It was perfect. The way the where, where it was located wasn't too far from the elevators. Like it was perfect. I I wanted to pack up that room and take it home with me. Like I I loved where we were put, um, and I will forever ask for midship because I don't know it felt like I was being rocked to sleep at night. I didn't feel sick. I felt like safe in that little middle portion. That is one. That's one thing about cruising I love is that at night that rocking motion. Mm-hmm. It does. It does help. It does help foster a better night's sleep. I think. Yeah. Personally. Well, and like the bed was great. It was nice and soft. I was able to fall asleep. I didn't wake up in back pain like I do every day. So I was like, "Wow, this ship is really magical. <laughs> like it is the ship of my dreams." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, really I wake nice. up with back pain and allergies. Yeah. <laughs> not on. Not on a Disney ship. What were you saying, Elaine? Uh, that the beds are just. Very, very, very comfortable. The beds and the pillows. I like them. <laughs> um, what? How did you fall selling as two adults without kids on a Disney cruise? Well, I mean, we're, we're in our mid-20s, so we are still kids at heart, and I think we'll always be. Um, my wife is obsessed with Donald. So there, there's, no, there's no problem going without kids if you love Disney. Like... She saw Donald in his little sailor suit thing that he was wearing with the red stripes, freaked out. She saw him dressed as a pirate, freaked out. I love characters, so I kind of put us in the category of us being the kids in the party. So the two of us being adults were acting like children the entire time. I saw Belle. I cried. Um, We did love that there was an adult-only section. We didn't feel like kids were in our way most of the time. Um... We didn't really mind them. They weren't bothering us. They weren't running all over the place or causing a commotion anywhere we went. Even on the on the main pool deck where all the families are waiting for Aqua Duck, we didn't feel that it was just kids. We saw a lot of people that were just couples hanging out in their 20s, having a good time. And we met a lot of people in the adult only clubs at night that were like, yeah, we rather cruise here, even though we don't have kids because it's Disney and we love Disney. So we get, we get to relate to the things we're seeing. So my wife loves Pixar. So seeing all the different nods to those movies, like cars 
and Nemo and everything just made her really happy. And for me, just to feel like I was transported to a place that was just magic everywhere I turned made me happy. And I think anyone who's a Disney fan that doesn't have children and just wants to cruise, I think should do it. Because it's a different experience. And I don't think you have to have kids to go on a Disney cruise. I, I don't I don't. Well, think I that. hope not because I've been on <laughs> dozens of them and don't have kids. Yeah, I don't plan on ever having children. I plan to go on Disney cruises for like the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm past the age now where I'm going to be having kids. So um, I'm right there with you. Um, what else? I loved the the shows in the theater. Beauty and the Beast. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I'm a very emotional person when it comes to entertainment. So the Golden Mickeys, I cried. Beating the Beast, I cried. Believe, I didn't cry, but I was getting choked up in the throat a little. Um, I thought all of those shows were amazing. I really enjoyed that. I wish we got to enjoy Castaway more. Not our fault. A mini hurricane just developed over the island out of nowhere. Um, It's a fun story we'll have forever because we saw the clouds coming in and we were like, okay, they're closing the water. Let's just go do something else that probably won't get affected by all of this. So we went to go rent the bikes. Right? $13 to rent the bikes. Let's go ride the bikes and see the entire island. We get to the observation tower area and I'm like, let me go try to find the ship. And I can't see the ship until I focus and I see it's behind a wall of water. And I'm like, we we need to go. Yeah. And we get on the bikes and it starts downpouring. So we're we're biking real fast, water hitting us, okay? Cold water. And we're trying to go, we're trying to go. We get back to where we rented them, and this lifeguard comes running out screaming, "Drop everything, go find shelter." I'm like, "We're going to die." <laughs> and if I if, if this happens here, it's okay, it's fine. At least I saw castaway, right? So we run to get shelter next to this splash pad and we're there for like an hour you know with other people we're just talking we're starving and the rain started to slow down so we eventually went and made our way to cookies too and ate food but i'll never forget that biking experience and having to hightail it to shelter um because lightning was hitting the water around us and so everyone was freaking out but they never opened the water again so after we ate they said well you guys can all go back to the ship unless you guys just want to walk around. So we just decided we're just going to walk back to the ship, see everything, go shopping. Got back to the ship, and we were like, you know what? Let's watch a movie in the room. And we got to do that, which was pretty nice. That's uh, something a lot of people like doing because they run a lot of Disney movies. Yeah. Uh, on the in-room television. And, again, I don't spend that much time in my room. I want to be out on that ship um, doing something, just being on the ship. Um, I don't spend too much time in my room, so I don't, I've never sat down and watched a movie. Maybe oh, that's something I have to challenge myself to do. It was day. so peaceful. It was so peaceful. Like after, you know, being drenched in cold rainwater, you get to get all cuddled up in the covers, nice and warm, and just watch a movie and relax. That part felt so relaxing for me. Because I was like, this bed is soft. We have like an hour and a half just to relax before we need to start getting ready for dinner. Um, Because we did the early seating because we normally eat at five anyway. So it just made sense to eat at that time. But it was nice. I recommend like if you ever have like a small chunk of time, just like sit and watch a movie or half a movie in your room to do it. Because it was pretty peaceful. Um, We didn't go to the spa, but we did the gym. They also play the stage shows. They um, simulcast those as well in your room as well if you don't want to go down to the theaters to watch them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What advice would you give to somebody else getting ready to do their first Disney cruise? I would say do your research, number one. Make sure that you, you know what you want to do. For me, I knew I wanted to do all things entertainment. So... I would say, look at the things you want to make a priority. One of those things, we didn't make Nassau a priority. We decided there's nothing for us there that we actually want to do. And we dedicated that day just to the ship. 
and we explored every inch we possibly could. Walked around, tried to get familiar, and enjoy it, because we, we paid to be on this ship and to experience it. So one of my pieces of advice is don't be afraid to explore. Go ahead. Go to every floor if you want to. Explore. It's fun. I, I didn't even know there was a place where you could play basketball. We yeah. went and played basketball on one of our moments exploring. Um, we went to the gym in the morning. And that was fun, getting to run on a treadmill, looking over the water. So if you like to work out and you don't want to work out your entire vacation, but you want to, you know, maybe one morning do that, go ahead. It's really fun. Um, my other piece of advice is bring everything you think you need or things that you wouldn't want to forget at home. Okay. I am an overpacker because I always get scared. Yeah. What if I need this? Yeah, me too. What what if I need this? Bring the ibuprofen. Bring bring things that you would use on like a daily basis. Well, that's especially true with things like, you know, medication, things things of that nature. I, I tell the story all the time about having a coughing fit in the middle of the night one night on the cruise, and I couldn't, no matter what I did, I couldn't stop coughing. And they had to wake up the doctor to give me cough medicine. And it costs like two hundred dollars. Because you're going to see the doctor mm -hmm. on the ship, and insurance doesn't cover that. At least mine didn't. Um, so now I make sure I'm always traveling with cough drops. I'm always traveling with any of those little things I might need. Yeah, no, you definitely need it. Um, and then the app. Like, you need to have the app, right? My wife thought she was going to get away with not having the app. No. You need to have it. You need to. So before... You leave, have the app, because you are going to need it to get things done, especially if you want to know what time the shows are at and to be reminded, because on the ship, time doesn't matter. It just flies. So you need to be reminded of what you want to do. So the app is really great to remind you of the things that you might have liked or hearted. So that's another piece of advice I have. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's good advice. That's good advice. All right, there you have it, folks. That's a look at Erica's first experience doing a Disney cruise. And uh, thank you, Erica, for sharing that with us. Yeah, of Glad course. Glad you enjoyed it. And uh, that will do it for this week's episode of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you again next week with another episode of the DCL Show. Have a great week, everyone.